given that you've managed so many people that have now transitioned into the job roles, do you have any advice for um, any students that are out there in general that might just think, I want to work in the industry? There's, there's so, like I said, there's so much now in esports and everything I've seen in the last year and all the universities and colleges I've been to. There's so much cool stuff to go and places to go and study and people to, to learn from. Um, yeah, just I wouldn't write anything off. Just like be open minded. And then when you find it, you'll find it. You'll know. However, I would always say, and as bizarre as it might sound, students are still the expert in that field. It's their interest you know uh, and make use of it you know if you want to bring more titles into an internal tournament for example ask them about it i'm now delighted to be joined by michael odell otherwise known as Odie. thank you so much for being here this weekend and for taking some time out just to have a chat to us so that i don't do a really bad job of it would you just give us a bit of an introduction let people know a bit more about who you are and what you've done across an unbelievable career in esports yeah, i'll do the short version um <laughs> So I've been in esports for 25 years. Um, I started off playing Quake 3 a uh, long, long time ago. Got into Battlefield 1942 and that led to the um, the, the Team Dignitas um, esports organisation being born. So I played for them and we were, we were the best team in the world at Battlefield 1942. That enabled us to like start picking up sponsors and then we just grew into a business and that grew and grew. We had... Hundreds of players come through Dignitas in many different games and we won a hell of a lot of stuff. Um, and then eventually 2016, uh, Dignitas was acquired by the Philadelphia 76ers who own Crystal Palace. Uh, Dignitas obviously still exists today. Um, I worked for them for a couple of years, moved on and worked for Rogue and Coy uh, for a couple more years. And last year I... I moved on from managing esports teams um, uh, to join Scan Computers as director of esports and gaming. And you've been a great sounding board for us at British Esports. And again, it's, it's great to have you here today. I know you've spent some time with some of the teams and we've just been talking outside, haven't we, to a couple of parents about the industry. I think what's really interesting to me when we have these types of events is, you know, th these sorts of things, they just didn't really exist in education years ago, you know, before we started the champs and, and the programmes. What what, are you, what have you seen here this weekend in terms of the teams and, and what opportunity is that now presenting to people that maybe didn't exist before? Yeah, I think the coolest thing for me re with regard to the teams is I see the same enthusiasm, disappointment, like anguish and like determination to go and play and win. Uh, it's the same as what I had for years and same feeling I had almost every day of my, my esports career. Uh, so it was cool actually what's coming in watching the teams play because obviously they're the best teams in the country got to the final um, and it's always terrible to lose a final like you'll, you'll never forget it but I've always said that in my career like never forget those finals because when you win like correct it yeah. um, so here it's just great seeing like the whole setup at Confetti X like all of the people in the background doing everything from broadcast the casters the commentators the hosts Seeing all of those roles now that are actually jobs in esports now, which didn't exist 25 years ago. Um, so the career paths for anybody coming into esports, uh, whatever you do, there, there's, there are career paths, uh, career paths, and there are parallel. Uh, there are parallel things in in the workplace that you could go into if you didn't go into esports. But to go into esports and th for me, yeah, please come into esports and make it bigger. I want to see it get bigger. I, I obviously, being here today, I wish I was 30 years younger and competing, <laughs> uh, but I'm not. And I'm, yeah, just here to support. And um, I don't know, 15 years ago, I saw how important education is going to be for esports moving forward. And I've always been a supporter of it. And it, it's so interesting, isn't it, that, we speak to lots of people that think about esports education. The, the immediate thing is we're playing video games, but then as you rightly described there, there are now so many roles. What what do you think this is doing in terms of engaging with students and people at a young age that are coming in for talent development from a player perspective, but then also those roles, the fact that this exists, how is that supporting growth? And, and you've managed so many players you know, across across your career thinking about that conversation around talent and having this platform 
what are the benefits of something like that? Yeah, I, I think the difference now compared to when I was running esports teams and bringing in coaches and staff, uh, the difference now is that there are courses out there and there are trained professionals that are used to every aspect of helping young people develop. And that's kind of the main thing. It doesn't really matter what they're doing. If it's being a player or a coach, training is key. Uh, experience is the next thing. And like preparing people to actually get that experience and then like bring that into whatever they do. I'm a real big advocate for coaching coaches at the moment. I know that's coming into um, education courses at the minute all, all over the place. And that's that's vital, I think, for the for, for esports to develop. Um if you look at traditional sport, there are all sorts of coaches in all sorts of roles. And yes, esports has a lot of those things, but there's still a lot to be added to it, which is pretty cool, I think. And it means that that, that there's more roles and um, jobs coming in the future for a lot of people. Yeah, it is. it's really exciting. And just in terms of, again, thinking back to all of the players that you've worked with across, across multiple organisations and having played yourself, Firstly, for the for the aspiring players that are out there, for the students that are here today that are thinking, I might have a chance. Um, have you got any advice to those from a playing perspective about how they could maybe take the next steps into the pro scene? Yeah, t two bits of advice. Like you've got to believe in yourself. Like if you if you feel that you could step up to a pro level, you've got to believe it. If you if you don't have that belief, I in my opinion you're not going to get that far every almost every single top player i've dealt with has got that self-determination like well, i'm not sure what the, the best way to describe it there's there's their tunnel vision on where they're going um uh, and i've completely forgotten what the second thing is well, the, the other part of that that i was thinking about is thinking about the people that do make it to pro so having that real you know that focus and that drive and that con that concentration to get to that level You've also then worked with lots of players who've then transitioned into other careers who may have, you know, been a pro in esports and they've moved into another area. They've found something, they've, they've innovated something. Yeah, it's, it's actually pretty cool. The last year, so I haven't been involved in coaching and managing at all, really. Uh, so, but it's opened my eyes to see what my former players are now doing. And they're, a lot of them are in really high positions of power in the esports industry. Um, and it's 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 kind of like my babies have grown up and they've gone off and flown the nest and they're doing really cool stuff. So for me, I'm really proud of what they're they're up to. A lot of them, yeah. Um, yeah. And I think that's that's what that we can relate to that for the for the people that are managing the teams now in education. It's a very similar thing that we're working with students, we're working with players, and we're, and we're seeing where they go. And that's really rewarding, isn't it? You've had that. You've had those people that have said thank you to you and that have been rewarding. I'm just thinking about the other students then that are, are in, interested in esports now. If they're not necessarily going to be the ones that becoming a pro player is for them, given that you've managed so many people that have now transitioned into other job roles, do you have any advice for um, any students that are out there in general that might just think, I want to work in the industry? Yeah, I think you just got to be open minded. Like, there's two ways of looking at it. If you if you're not going to be a pro player and it's hard to do it, it really is. Um, and you want to be in esports, find something you want to do. I know that's really easy for me to say, but you've got to try things out. You've got to like get involved. Um, there's this, like I said, there's so much now in esports and everything I've seen in the last year and all the universities and colleges I've been to. There's so much cool stuff to go and places to go and study and people to, to learn from um yeah just i wouldn't write anything off just like be open-minded and then when you find it you'll find it you'll know yeah um, amazing. thank you so much as always Odi. thank you for your time today for being this weekend yeah, no and thank you always for your advice really appreciate it yeah, thank you cheers i'm pleased to now be joined by shubs Shubbs and I have known each other for a number of years and Shubbs has been doing lots of work, great work around esports and education. So really excited to explore that a little bit more with you. Um, so Shubbs, just tell us a little bit more about who are you for those that haven't met you mm -hmm. yet and who are you here with today? Okay, um, so I'm Shubbs. Um, I am an esports lecturer um, and I also sit on the advisory board for the British Esports Federation as well. So I do lots of things kind of around esports and collegiate level um, kind of things um, and I'm here with Greg my daughter so this is my daughter's first student champs event 
Um, and then I've got a colleague from North Warwickshire South Leicester College, my manager, Blake, and um, a former colleague um, who's also an esports lecturer as well. And that's Rich. Amazing. So, yeah, we're here on location at the Student Champs Grand Finals. Uh, it's great to see you, Shubs. Thanks for coming. And thanks always for being on the advisory board, for everything that you advise us on it. You know, it's it's great to always see you and to hear from you. And I think what I'd really like to just explore a little bit more today is could you just to almost rewind the clocks a little bit and think about what you've done over the last few years, mm. just to frame for people listening that may be new to esports education, maybe mm -hmm. thinking about implementing programmes, um, tell us a little bit about your experience, esports education from a curriculum perspective mm. and implementing curriculum, and then also the champs alongside that and, and that journey. Okay, then yeah, of course. Um, so we started the BTEC in esports in 2021. Um, and it all kind of allowed esports to grow in my last college. So um, what we were able to do was kind of contextualise what they were actually learning into the curriculum as well. So we already started the student champs beforehand. Uh, we had a couple of other tournaments that we did, but it, it was about kind of giving them a little bit more than just that kind of experience and give them an outlook of the whole esports ecosystem which is, um, of course, what the uh, the courses are kind of designed to do in a way. So we initially started with the level three. Then we had a huge group for that. Um, so we had to split them because uh, we had about 40 students. Um, and then in the second year, we kind of marketed it a little bit different. And it was more about, you know, you're not just here to play the games, but it's about, you know, the branding. It's about the video production, the shoutcasting, all of those kind of aspects. So... Um, and it wasn't until the following year that we introduced the level two qualification. Um, and then since then, I've gone into another college. Um, and from September, we are starting our HNC as well. So I'm really excited to, to be able to do that. I think a lot of people, when they look at you know the courses that are available now, mm -hmm. so we're, we've got a full curriculum pathway, as, as Shubs well knows, but starting at level one and level two with leadership qualifications, key stage three, key stage four, introduction, short courses. Then we build onto the level two BTEC, the level mm -hmm. three BTEC. We've now got the HNC, the HND. Uh, we, we support degrees, um, College of Esports as our exclusive university partner, but then also we, we've now got over 20 different higher education programs, institutions, mm. over 50 different courses that are running. So we've got, in the UK now, we've got this full pathway that's available and some people are still not aware of it or they've not implemented it yet. What advice would you give to anybody that's thinking about implementing esports education programs? Like where, where should you start? How do you think about what are the key things that we need to think about if we're going to embed this? And, and obviously you, mm. you've just done that again mm -hmm. in, a, in a new uh, environment, a new organisation. So what almost what steps did you have to go through to, to get that up and running? I think, um, I, and I've been quite sort of fortunate because I kind of already understood the esports background, the industry itself. Um, and I had another team member that was also be able to guide me through that as well. However, I would always say, and as bar bizarre as it might sound, students are still the expert in that field. Yes. It's their interest, you know, uh, and make use of it. You know, if you want to bring more titles into an internal tournament, for example, ask them about it. You know, um, for September, we're going to do open trials. So I've got a former student um, who's come in to do the HNC with us, nice. um, which is really exciting. And he's really hyped about, you know, bringing home the trophy, all of that sort of stuff. And we're going to do open trials in the first two weeks of September. And he's going to come in and dedicate his time to support with that. So it's not just me running around trying to gather teams, scrims, you know, matches, all of that sort of stuff. I've got a student that is going to be able to do that. So utilize the students because it is their interest, it's their hobby, um, and they're going to feel just as passionate about it as you are. And if you're not already, then, you know, seeing it from the students, you will, because they get so much joy out of it, the things that they learn from it, it it's brilliant and it's great to see. It's, and that's the key, isn't it? It's mm. the reason that we do all of this. It's the it's the young people at the end of that that are, that are seeing the impact. Here today, at, we're at Confetti X at our mm. Student Champs Finals, and downstairs we've got people on stage right now that are they're here. They've made it to the Nationals Finals, and they're competing. They're representing 
the school, the college, the badge, the town, the city, the region. We've got Belfast Meta here from Northern Ireland. Mm. So in that instance, the country that they're, they're here representing. Uh, and it's just so powerful. What mm. what have you seen, in, you know, in implementing esports programs over the last few years? What have you seen in terms of impact? Lots of people will always say to me, yeah, what's the impact? When we, we can implement the programs and we can think about how we're going to deliver them and, and you know, how we're going to involve employers and what modules are we going to choose and what does it look like? But that end point, now you've seen that full cycle. Can you give us any examples of how you've really seen, you know, individual students develop or as individuals or as collectives? And where have they gone? What are they doing now, some mm. of the students? Yeah, well, I mean, one of the key things that I've always kind of talked about, and I think it's brilliant, is the fact that students have become more confident. Um, they've built friendships. And that's really nice to see. Um and so much that they, you know, some people have come over to the student champs, even though they're not taking part in it. Um, and that's been really nice to see. But also um, just their sort of communication skills. I've always said that the esports course that I did run, run um, was very social. Yeah. And I have every intention to do exactly the same thing at North Warwickshire as well. A lot of our students do sort of come to us and they're very quiet. They, you know, might um, suffer with anxiety. Um, they might be really shy or they don't quite know how to um, communicate with other, other peers. And so as a result of the way that you can run the BSEX, you can make it social. The way that we can implement the student champs into the curriculum, that can also um, impact the way they kind of, you know, are and the way they develop as well. So in terms, bringing it all together, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah thinking absolutely. Thinking about the modules, you know, the, the the social side of it, bringing the champs in, mm. thinking when when we're delivering certain modules, you know, it might be analysis. Well, mm. Let's analyse the champs. If you're thinking about video production, shoutcasting, mm. let's deliver those roles. If you're thinking about branding and social media, let's create that for the. And, and it really becomes a, it becomes projects, doesn't mm -hmm. it? It becomes project based learning, building evidence, building this portfolio and this repertoire of skills and evidence mm. to to be able to use this thing that we love, that we're passionate about, that we enjoy, to then actually build some real credibility and experience to mm -hmm. when you leave then to go, rather than I would like to, if I got this job, mm -hmm. I've already done. And this is why you should give me the job because I've already got, here, here you go. And I think that's what that's what we're seeing. Where, where, where have students gone now that you've taught in the past? Have, have you got any examples of people that are, you know, working in the industry or, or other adjacent industries uh, in terms of their progression or where they've moved on to? Um, I have three students working the student champs this weekend. <laughs> um, so uh, we've got shoutcasters. We've got someone that's running around dealing with all the production. Um, we've got an observer for the Valorant game as well. So And they're great, by the way. Let me say that. They're absolutely fantastic. They really are. <laughs> um, and I'm incredibly proud of them. And those were the students that, you know, not only did the course really well, but they did extra. Um, they took part in what we did as part of extracurricular with the eSports course as well. Um, so I think that's really important to provide students with those opportunities. Um, so in terms of planning for next year, um, I'm teaching psychology for eSports performance um, and the students that are doing the final assignment for that unit, they're actually going to be working with the students that are competing Perfect. in the student champs. And it's that kind of transferable skills but also contextualizing what they're learning with an actual project like you said you know esports does become a project and it's a great way to kind of allow them to to, to get that experience yeah it's that it's that real world mm. learning isn't it and those real world skills and i think one of the things that is, is equally important because when we look at the curriculum We've got those elements of business. We've mm -hmm. got those elements of creative media, you know, events, video production, content creation, that side of things. We've got the sport side with the psychology, mm -hmm. the nutrition, the health and well-being. And then we, we've got all of the links into esports, which really the students are developing business skills, mm -hmm. they're, they're marketing, they're doing financial planning. And you mentioned earlier some some individuals that may come with a little bit, you know, lacking in confidence. We've, you know, we've got an incredibly diverse community of students that study esports, that play in the student champs. And through these assessment methodologies and the way that it's taught through the lens of esports, you see that skill development, don't you? They're developing the knowledge in all of these areas. Have, have you got any students that, when, when they sign up to the course, do, do they all come just saying like, 
I'm a gamer and I'm, I'm interested in esports and that's why I want this course. Or do you, have you found people coming in that go, well, I've got an interest in business or I've got an interest in certain areas of the industry. Have you, have you found that in the past? Um, so we go through the interview process as most colleges would. Um, and I always ask, you know, why do you want to do this course? Um, a lot of them do say I play games. Um, and I do have to kind of say, you know, you're not going to be on this course to play games because you're le going to learn about so many other things. Um, some of them will sort of say they want to be a professional player. And again, I would then have to say, you know, you're not going to be on this course. So I teach you to become a pro player. If you are a good player, then I will put you in touch with coaches, other teams, that kind of stuff. Um, but we have had students that have said, I'm interested in building my own esports organization. Um, I want to be a shoutcaster. I want to, you know, be behind the scenes in these huge global esports events. And so more so now, and I think it's because we are advertising the course. We're doing our jobs by, you know, talking about esports constantly. Um, it's getting bigger in the UK and it's now sort of becoming recognized as a career pathway. And it is valid. Of course it is. I've seen it with my own students. Um, and so some of them do sort of come to me and say, I already know what it is. I just, I need to know everything else. Yes. Yeah. And then finally, just on, on the students and, you know, the, the types of students that you get. What about esports in terms of its inclusivity and diversity? And we talk about quality and accessibility a lot in, mm -hmm. in these areas. Um, what what have you noticed around, you know, the, the esports community and, and the types of students that you're getting on board? And, and what has esports done for developing communities, if you like, within, mm -hmm. within education? Um, I think that, I mean, particularly with British Esports uh, student champs with the, the women in esports team, but also the initiative as well, that really sort of encourages um, women and uh, marginalised genders to sort of take part and sort of say, you know, this is a safe space. Um, I also think yeah. that it's a responsibility of the staff, the lecturing staff in esports, but also the students to kind of recognise the cha these challenges, which is why I think the ethical issues um, unit is such a good unit because we go through, you know, all the myths about what people think um, is esports. And then I get students to challenge themselves to be like, well, why do you think this is the case? You know, do you not think that we should be doing this? And I absolutely love the final assignment where they have to think about breaking those barriers. They have to come up with how to promote it in a positive way. And um, this year, this academic year was the first year that I taught it. And the students kind of came out of it to sort of, you know, their minds were blown. They were like, we didn't realize it was, you know, this big. We didn't realize it was this inclusive. This is great. And, you know, that's really nice to see. And so, like I said, we, we are doing our jobs in terms of trying to make it a safer space for, for people as well. I think that's the beauty, isn't it, that we've, you know, pre-2019 and, and 2020 when the BTEX launched as the first of their kind in the world, mm. it wasn't a thing, eSports education. Mm. So, you know, Shubs as well, you've done a lot of work with us on developing things, you know, mm. new curriculum, new areas, um, always somebody that we, that we come to for expertise in these areas. I think that's the beauty about the qualifications is it's about the future workforce. It's about changing the industry develop and and there's the, the young people that we work with they've got such innovative creative ideas and this is a program it allows that to come to the front and one of the big pieces of research that um we've just released with dell technologies one of our partners is that up to 85 percent of jobs that are going to exist in 2030 haven't even been created yet mm. so how can we deliver education programs now that teach the skills for the jobs that haven't been created mm. yet and it's those challenges yes it's those those projects those assignments right what are your solutions what are your ideas and, and i think that's just it, it's so interesting it's impactful when you see the development that the students go on when you see where they get to at the end point when you see them representing and some of the young people that i've worked with i'm sure it's the same for you they might not have been in the, the sports team or they might not have been in the drama club or, or or the football club and i think that's that's just so powerful so i, I just think to to leave it shubs and to finish off mm. for anyone who's out there listening whether it's a parent who's got you know somebody at home who's really interested in the industry whether it's somebody in education who's thinking about you know implementing the programs or to anyone who's thinking about you know developing further like you you're developing your curriculum now and you're moving into the H and C. what would your one piece of real advice be in terms of why you think people should implement esports into education 
Um, I think the big thing is um, esports is so varied in terms of what you can learn from it. Just because you do an esports course, it doesn't mean that you have to work in esports because of those transferable skills. So we do esports events. They, the students will be taking control of a whole event for their assessment. That They're already demonstrating events management skills. They're already looking at budgeting, liaising with other people, communicating in a professional manner. So, you know, and that's just one unit. Yeah. You know, I could go on. Um, but, you know, it's transferable skills that you don't have to continue working in esports if that's not what's for you. Uh, potentially, you know, you could be an esports psychologist or a sports psychologist. And uh, like I said, I could go on. Yeah, skills, skills, skills. You know, we, we've seen it recently from skills improvement plans up and down the country. And the, the, we've got big challenges in the UK mm -hmm. around digital skills digital skills gaps. So I think, you know, my lasting message, my question is always to people, if you're not delivering an esports education program yet, why not? Mm -hmm. there, there are so many more reasons to do it. And you've heard a few of those today than to not do it. So Shubs, thank you so much. As always, it's a pleasure. Thank um, you. I, I know you'll not mind me saying this. Shubna is a bit of an expert in the field. So we're lucky to have her. Um, for anybody out there who is, you know, wanting advice, wanting somebody to go to who's been there and done it, um, Shumna's always been great in terms of supporting other people, other colleges, you know, other centres, other professionals. So um, I'm sure, you know, you'd be able, you'd be willing to help. And if people reach out, um, you've got a great person here who's been there and done it and who's got lived experience. So thank you once thank again. You. Let's go and enjoy the rest of Student Champs. Let's go. Thank you. <laughs>